Hi, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Rasmussen, and I'm the lead researcher and engineer behind a recent publication entitled Synthesis of Metal Organic Framework HKUST1 via Tunable Continuous Flow Supercritical Carbon Dioxide Reactor, which is a lot of words, um, but I'm assuming that's how you found this video. Um, the publication is based on my PhD research at University of Washington in Seattle. And um, my PhD research was centered around uh, making uh, nanomaterials in a very efficient way. And the idea was to understand the thermodynamics of fluids in the supercritical phase. And so, the main contribution and um, the main thing that I worked on innovating during my PhD was this reactor that could make metal organic frameworks sustainably and quickly and ideally help to make metal organic framework nanomaterials accessible and usable uh, for whatever applied science that people wanted. And for those of you that don't know, metal organic frameworks, you can think of them basically like really tiny sponges. They have a really high surface area, so they can be used for everything from batteries to like water filters to gas separators. And um, there's a lot of cool startup companies that are working on this technology. And when I found out about metal organic frameworks like five, six years ago, I was like, okay, if these things are so magic, like why aren't they everywhere? And the reason why was because uh, scalability is an issue. So in the lab, when people are creating new metal organic framework materials, which there's now more like 90,000 different ones, um, they use like a batch process where they're basically a, take like a cup of coffee <laughs> or like you take a crucible, you put your stuff in, you close it, put it in an oven, you wait a couple of days, you take it out and boom, there's your material. I mean, not really, I'm simplifying it, but um, so my work is a continuous process that's manufacturing it, um, but specifically using carbon dioxide as the heating and mixing medium instead of like extra solvent material or water um, and being able to manipulate the thermodynamic properties near the critical point, which for carbon dioxide is really low. It's like 30 degrees Celsius and around seven megapascals. Um, and so I created this reactor. I had the idea because carbon dioxide, you know, we have a lot of it. <laughs> so can we use it? And then it also will separate out really quickly. And um, yeah, I just tried. I got funding from the University of Washington Clean Energy Institute. So shout out to them uh, and support from my advisors, which was awesome to just like try something and support from uh, people who I'd worked with in different internships. And so, yeah, I created this reactor. We did a first publication that came out like two years ago, um, the link to it's below. And that was really like showing the world, oh, look, we can do this thing of making these like metal organic frameworks um quickly in a lot of them and so that was with the zirconium metal based metal organic framework and that was because we were motivated to make it for some of our collaborators and so we did it and it worked so then the trick was i wanted to like understand like okay to what extent does this reactor work can it work with different materials can it work in different pressures and temperatures and like basically do like an ex a whole experiment thrust so um, I made some modifications to the reactor, um, and I, I, I'm doing, I did this copper metal organic framework that's really well known. HKUST1 is like one of the names for it. Um, so yeah, I did that. And that's what this publication is all about. It was hard because COVID happened and, uh, University of Washington was great with like safety and labs and stuff. Um, so shout out to them and thank you. But I was able to get into the lab. I worked with some amazing undergraduate researchers that I recruited and you'll see them in the video. And yeah, so this video, like the, the motivation to make this video, <laughs> I'm not a video editor or anything, so please be kind, um, was because, you know, a manuscript and a paper uh, can only get you so far. And I, you know, photos can only get you so far. So one of the last days that like before the quarter ended, I was like, we got to take a video of this thing working so that people can see it. And if people want to use it or like, to increase engagement. So um, the video that's, we'll start right after this 
little intro. Um, basically, I'm doing a walkthrough of the reactor while it's running. And I'm like showing you some stuff. Um, I'll have some images that show so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, hopefully I've done a good enough job in the manuscript that you can like follow along um, and all the details to reproduce it are there. And, and also I saw in like, I'm a mechanical engineer and in like biology or medicine, I saw that there's been like more of a recent push to do videos for reproducing stuff. And um, I don't know, I just thought it'd be fun. And um, so anyways, here it is. Um, I do have some footage of like the process behind like once I get the material, there's a whole lot of like characterization that happens to verify that you made what you wanted to make, um, which is a whole learning experience. Um, so I could make a video about that if you guys want. I have a video that I could make about lessons learned, but we'll just see how this first one goes. Uh, and it's really to help you understand the methods section of the paper. Um, so yeah, leave comments below if you have questions. Um, no promises on when I'll be able to like reply to them, but uh, it'll hopefully be great if you're from, and this is for like academics or, you know, students. And, you know, if you're in industry and you're like, wow, this is amazing. Like why we should like use this technology. Uh, we do have a patent on it that we submitted for the US and also for under the world WO patent. So those details are in the paper and I can just like link them below as well. So yes, license the technology, that'd be great. Um, and also if you are in academia and this video slash manuscript helped you in any way, please cite it. Um, that's basically the currency. If I was a YouTube star, um, the currency is like subscriptions and likes, which that'd be cute too if you guys did that. But really, um, hopefully with this added video, uh, it'll help you. And yeah, go please cite my papers <laughs> if it was useful to you. Um, so I can see the impact. Others can see the impact. Um, and yeah, so... I look forward to seeing you guys' comments and here's the video. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Rasmussen and I'm gonna walk you through um, my supercritical CO2 uh, continuous synthesis for MOFs right now. So we're running an experiment right now. And so what happens is we have CO2 in a cylinder um, coming out. We have a pressure gauge to measure the pressure at that 800 PSI out. Um, it, goes through into the cold bath right here where we have uh, calcium chloride, water, and dry ice solution. Um, and we have a thermocouple measuring the temperature, which is at about negative 10 degrees Celsius. So it gets condensed from the gas into a liquid and it flows into this CO2 pump. And it gets pumped at the flow rate that we've defined, which is 20 milliliters a minute. And then once it's pumped, it gets pumped up to the pressure of the reactor system, which right now is at about 10 megapascals or 1450 PSI. And so then it goes through here, there's a check valve to make sure water doesn't flow backwards into it. We have rupture discs located here. Those are the big black tubes. And then it goes through, we have a pressure gauge also in there to make sure that the pressure of the system is what we're reading on the pumps and then it goes through this preheater which is um, controlled by this heater unit up here and then it flows up it's all insulated and we take the temperature of the co2 right here and then it goes into the counter current mixing section and it mixes with the precursors and so the precursor pumps here's the precursors we have the um, copper precursor and the um, organic linker precursor right here and they flow into these HPLC pumps and they get then they go up to pressure and they get mixed in a T formation down here and then it mixes with the preheated supercritical carbon dioxide and then we take a temperature reading of at the mixing section and then right after the mixing section right here through the thermocouple and then it goes through to the heated reactor section, which is right here.
and the temperature of the mixing section and between the mixing section and right after the mixing section. So it's an isothermal setup. And then um, it flows through the reactor section. We get a temperature reading right here. And it goes through this just water, calcium chloride, dry ice, cold bath, just to keep it in, under 100 degrees Celsius before going through the bath pressure regulator. And then it comes out, we take the temperature reading. Here's the bath pressure regulator, which is um, kept from a nitrogen tank on the other side of the fume hood. And we have wrap heaters around it, which are monitored right here, um, so that when the CO2 is throttling from uh, the reactive pressure of 10 megapascals down to atmosphere pressure, um, it doesn't form ice or clog the system. And so then we have this heater wrapped around, and then we have a T where then it can go into the collection beakers. And so then here's the and so then here is the thermocouple uh, deck and then the controls for the heater. And then here is, we have we put up a little shield to save the laptop. And so then here is the laptop monitoring the temperature and you can see it's super steady, uh, which is fantastic. Um, and that's the reactor system. Okay, so now we're gonna just switch collection beaker so that um, this is starting to get a little bit full and we don't want it to like be splattering or anything. So we're just going to use this three-way valve to switch it. So switching it now. And so now it's going into collection beaker M4. So M3 is all done. So we're going to take the parafilm, which is over it all, and throw it away and take M3. Take it away, take it over here cap on it and then take this speaker and five put it in position and because this run today is just to do one experiment setting but for a long time usually we wipe down these tubes and also between experiments we would switch from the precursors to ethanol um, and then wait until um, ethanol is run through the system for about five minutes to, in between experiments to know that we got all, we're not collecting anything from the previous experiment. Um, and so this is just what we do when we're doing it for a long continuous run. Say hi, Ilya. Hi, Lauren.